Good morning and welcome to Tuesday the 2nd of November and it's it's actually now quite a lovely day, sun shining, a bit fresh, not as fresh as it was when I got up this morning at 7 o'clock to make a cup of tea because freedom, and you don't hear me say this very often, was cold. Uh, cold, and you can see I've got a jumper on, and it's cold for a reason and that is because it's, I know it's the 2nd of November, but for me, it's the end of the month because Sunday would have been the end of the month for me. Uh, the last Sunday of every month, I cleaned the chimney. And as it was slinging it down with rain in the morning when I got up, I decided just to bank the fire up and snuggle down for the day with Misty on the sofa. So today, uh, first day of, of three, I'm going to blitz my chimney and stove. Now, I'm not going to video it all because you've seen me do this in previous videos. I am going to go through just a few basics as I'm doing it, just a few things to remember when you're doing yours. Um, I know a lot of people, they do their chimney. I've just spoken to a chap funny enough this morning on the marina and he says, oh, I'll just do mine once a year. And I think, well, that maybe worked for you, but it wouldn't work for me. When I got on board Freedom, again, if you look back in the history of the vlogs, um, I had an issue and the issue was that the stove kept going out and it ended up being a case of the actual base part of the flue was literally chock-a-block absolutely caked up it also had a um the bowl that's fitted underneath um the, the top of the morso screw when it leaves the factory that shouldn't have even been on there uh, because when it's on a boat that has to be removed that was still in place so what was happening was it was literally a bowl upside down under the flue so every time the original owner had cleaned his, his um, flue down with a brush, all he was doing was brushing and compounding um, elements of that sort into this bowl. And it's designed that at the very back of the bowl, where it fits snug up into the roof of the moor, so there's a slit, and that's where the smoke goes up and out the chimney. Well, of course, all he'd done was compounded it, so he filled it to such a level that the smoke couldn't even get out, so it just extinguished the fire itself. So, yeah, of course, I removed the bowl and I said that day when I realised just how bad it was that at the end of every month, as a matter of routine, I sweep the chimney and that's what I do. And uh, I've made a little device. Again, I've covered it in one of the vlogs and you'll see me using that today. It's just made out of an embroidery ring. Uh, you know what I'm like. I like to make things out of, <laughs> out of things that don't cost me a lot of money. Uh, and it just saves all the debris that comes down the chimney falling behind the back boiler because the shape of the back boiler at the back is like if you're looking from the front this is the back boiler shape and the chimney is here so as the rubbish comes down its natural progression is to fall down behind the back boiler which is a flipping nightmare to get out so I've come up with this little ingenious device which you'll see me video in it in a bit and it does the job perfectly it stops all the debris going down I have um, a, a pipe I bought off of eBay it's like a it's like a crevice pipe on a hoover. I don't know what I've still got my hand there for. It's like a crevice pipe on a hoover and uh, it's flexible, but it's longer. So I can tuck that down behind the um, back boiler and get any bits that I can't reach, obviously, with my hands to get out. A lot of people say, oh, I wouldn't have a, a multi-burner fire because of all the mess and the dust and the hassle. Well, as for the mess, I don't quite get that because I've been on board Freedom now about 19 months, so I've gone through two lots of cold spells. My boat's not dusty. It's not messy. Um, I don't do anything any different to anybody else, I don't think. I just, just generally sweep the hearth when I've took the ash pan out um, and just kept everything clean and tidy. I don't go around every day with a duster, so it's not that big an issue. And as for the cleaning of the chimney, yeah, it, end of every month it might take me 40 minutes in total to do the chimney and the and the stove but the way i look at it is i have a very dry boat that more so squirrel keeps my boat lovely and warm and condensation free and if that costs me 40 minutes of my time once a month plus the safety factor that i'm not going to get a chimney fire because there's nothing in the chimney it's always kept clean um for me well worth it so I'll show you, I'm not going to do a lot of massive stuff this week. I've got a little idea regarding the uh, storage of the tiller extender poles that I've done. 
and also the storage of my um, windlasses that I've painted and put away. So I've got a bit of a, a plan for them. So if it, if it comes to fruition, you'll see it in this vlog. If you don't see it, it's because it didn't work. <laughs> I've just edited it out. Um, and it's Tuesday, so it's Lou Day. So I've got that to sort. I'm not going to take you with me on that one. I did that in a, a previous video, although I didn't do the real cassette. Obviously, it was just water in it. Um, what else have I got to do? Oh, and I've got to show you that Freedom sprung a leak. So it's time for toast and marmalade, a cup of coffee, and then I'm on the roof brushing that flipping chimney. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. Now, I know a lot of people, as I said earlier, dread having to clean the fire out. But for me, I think it's quite ther therapeutic. I really do. Uh, so it's well caked up. It wants a damn, damn good clean. There's a lot of coals in there that's gone out because I've allowed the fire to go out. So I've got a bucket that I'm going to put them in um, because they will make the base of the next fire. I'm not chucking them away because they've still got several hours of burning left in them. But as you can see, maybe across the front, uh, on the actual inside, there's a heck of a layer of uh, ash, as is on the front here where I've been messing about this morning. Now, the most, one of the most important things, always, 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 if you're going to clean your fire and you've let it go out, remember to shut off both your vents. Never start <laughs> without doing that first, because at some point you're going to put the brush down and everything's going to come flying out these two vents so always shut them um i'm not being a girl no disrespect to girls but i'm going to put some gloves on because i find it's just easier to wash the gloves than it is to get the soot out of my hands right so on board freedom i'm looking i've got the space to keep my old henry hoover that i had in at work and I use this solely for the fire. So excuse the noise, I'm just going to get some of the worst of the ash out of the way. As you can see, there's a heck of a build up. Just avoid making a lot of dust in your boat. You'll be able to have a hoover that's solely Use for this purpose. Right, I've got it nice and clean before I start. And I can see exactly how bad it all is. Now, on the on the floor, I put a, a bin liner. I don't think you can actually see. Let me just pull you down so you can see what I'm doing. I'm telling you these things, look, there's a bin line look next to my bucket, just to keep all my bits and pieces on. So I'm going to take the front grid out, just give it a tap, a gentle tap, and lay it inside the ash pan, and now I can continue getting some of this loose ash out. <laughs> As I say, there's no point in throwing it away because it's still got life in it. I don't see the point of just wasting it. And that's the big bits out of the way. I keep threatening to throw this companion set away because it's just manky. But when I do come to clean the fire out, it is quite handy. I think what I'm going to have to do, because there's still quite a bit of ash in there. Put the ash pan back in. Shut everything down. And that should have got rid of most of that ash into the pan. I don't want to 
ash in the bucket. I'm going to be putting it back in the bucket. So even all these small bits will all go back in. Right, now there's a little bit of what I call clinker. Well, that I don't want. So we'll hoover that up. It is cold, so it's not going to set fire to me through the back. And so far, it's making no mess whatsoever. You know, it's just that advantage of having a hoover that you're not going to use to clean your, your boat with, but it's solely there for the fire. So I'm going to take these side panels out, these metal side panels, and uh, this one's always a bit of pain. Just doesn't want to come out, but it will do in a minute. Do get I don't really I'm not going to take you off of there you get a build up on the actual face of the back boiler of a crud for want of a better word um, what I'm going to do so I can get this panel out because there's some jammed up against the back of that I'm going to just turn you off while I'm going to get a screwdriver or a blunt instrument just to scrape some of that out of the way and then I'll bring you back right. I've removed this plate that sits on the side and what these are there for these metal plates is the fire brick is on the side of the stove is here and what it does it creates a, a slope for the fire content whether it's uh, wood or uh, coal to fall down into the fire so it's not like sitting smack up against the side it just gives it a natural progression down this one as I was saying earlier has always been a pain to get out not helped by the fact that you get a build up of this kind of stuff between the back boiler and this edge so it's a bit like that on the edge of this plate and uh, to be fair that's caused a lot of that is caused by not having the fire hot enough um, and even though I do advocate you know trying to keep the fire as hot as you can there is occasions when like if I go to work and the fire's in I turn it right down um, just so it's ticking over and I do try every night just to open it up so it gets a good burn but you're still going to get some clinker like this build up and it's very tarry based horrible stuff now this is another reason why I clean mine every month because I just think if you're burning your stove I don't know five months of the winter and you haven't bothered to clean this is just going to get built up higher an iron level and it's just going to be a, an absolute nightmare to deal with so that it's got to go in the bin what I'm going to do because it's always been a problem this I think I'm going to before I put the fire back together I'm going to use my angle grinder and I'm just going to grind a little bit off this leading edge just a, a couple of mil and it'll just help fit it back in neater so what I've got to do now is empty the ash that was in the ash pan from where I riddled it from the remainders that were in here. And you can see <laughs> there's quite a lot of that. That's got to go in the ash bucket. And I need to fit my special little device. And I haven't brought it in with me. Give me a second, I'll bring it in oh. and I'll show you. Okay, so I've emptied the ash pan. Just move over out again, I like to keep on top of it. I'm going to do this again when it's on the chimney. I like 
light to work nice and clean. Right, so I'm going to put the ash pan back in. Shut that up. But before I shut the door, this saves me a lot of hassle. All it is, is a lady's embroidery ring. And I've just put a piece of polythene. I think it's an old carrier bag I used. And because the, the back boiler is facing the front of the, um, the stove is here, the back boiler is shaped where chamfer and then down to the back of the boiler. The flue sits directly half and half over the top. So when I come to brush, you can't help it that some of it is going to go down behind the back boiler and it's a it's a nightmare absolute nightmare to get at so i've got this little device it's a flexible tool um and it only has a very small hole on it so you have to be careful of any big bits it'll just block it so you have to keep taking it out and getting rid of them but this will feed over the back of the boiler to get down into the crooks and crannies using the hoover but this is to get the contents of the chimney so as the back boiler is facing my finger ends up this is the front of the stove obviously where i am as the back boiler is that shape this will slot over the top and sit directly under the chimney so when i put the chain ball down which i'll show you in a minute when we go on the roof 90 percent of the rubbish should in theory land on here and i can then pull it out and take it and tip it straight into my ash bucket let's see if it works so you can see it's clean going in it's just got a little bit of a dip in it when you press on it just to catch you know any of the contents that's in place doors shut vents closed let's go on the roof if you're wondering why I'm wearing a head torch, it's just so that when I get up on the roof, I can look down the flue and see what sort of build up there is. I'm just laying a towel on the roof just to keep any of the spits that come out when I put the brush down from uh, getting ingrained into the textured roof finish that I've got. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look down the chimney just to see how much of a build up there is and uh, while the main part of the chimney above the roof is still in place I'm going to put my chain ball down to knock off all the crud down into the base of the uh, where the stove is and this chain ball is just a, a length about a meter and a bit of chain I bought I've just cable tied it all together tied it to a bit of a, a line and as you can see, I'm just bouncing it up and down and it just scrapes off. Sometimes it gets a bit stuck, but it just scrapes off any of the build up before I start putting the brush down. It takes the finer bits. And I'm just having a quick look to see if I've got all the crud off the inside of the main part of the chimney. And uh, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to remove the chimney itself so I get access into the main flue. And uh, again, I'm going to chain boil it, chain ball it uh, before I put the brush down. Now you don't have to go crazy doing this, just let the chain rub up and down inside the flue. You'll feel as you let go of the cord, you'll eventually feel when it hits the, um, the hoop that I've put at the bottom, just above the boiler, and it's just scraping off all that um, crap and it makes doing the brushing part so much easier. And uh, yeah, it works for me. I'm not saying it's sh what everybody should do, but this is the way I do it. And it always seems to leave the chimney really clean. Right, I'm happy that the chain ball's done all it needs to do. I'm just straightening out the, uh, the shaft on this brush. And again, several good hefty sweeps up and down. And again, I'm feeling when I send it down, I feel for the brush touching that hoop at the bottom. Lift it up about four inches, so I'm not banging into that um, catcher at the bottom. 
and then just give everything a damn good scrubbing with the brush. Now I'm happy with that, I'm just going to have another look there and that's why I've got that head torch on and I can see everything looks pretty sprint and span and uh, just got to tidy everything up and I can get back down. I'm just going to put that chain ball down one more time just to be sure and uh, then I'm going to get back inside and I'll show you just how bad it was. Okay, that's giving all the, the chimney a good sweep out. Now what we do is have a look at what we've got come down the chimney. And here we go. And that has all been sitting up there which in my opinion is actually a fire hazard. So I'm going to take this out carefully without spilling too much of it and put it in my ash bucket. You can see it's not actually made a lot of mess this is what i don't understand when people say having a, a solid fuel fire is a, a messy job i think it's only messy if you don't approach it the cleaning of it properly so i'm just going to have a good old hoover out of the where the ash pan was can imagine that just a few bits have fell into that and then uh, i'm going to be getting ready to put it all back together but not until i've ground the edge of this off just to make it fit better so let's get it over now. The more of the debris that you can get out, the safety of fire is going to be. And when I poke this about the back, Picking up bits and pieces. There might be all this kind of stuff better out than being left behind. And well worth taking that time. Just let the Uber do its job. I keep knocking you and I think I've just knocked you off the, the uh, stand. Right, so what I was about to say was, I'm just going to put this extender back on and tuck it down behind the back boiler, just for one last poke around. May as well while I'm here. And uh, you'll hear the tone of the, of the hoover change if it gets blocked. freedom what is it now 19 months so that's 19 tries of getting this out 19 tries of getting it in so 38 attempts and a lot of bad words in between and i've just took it out onto a pontoon run my grinder just across that end and uh, and now fits as quick as that so another little job that I've kept pulling off and pulling off and really I should have just got my act together and got it sorted but at least now getting it in and out is not an issue so I've just got to put the uh, grill front back in that's just to stop anything rolling into the glass and uh, 
have a wipe around with a wet wipe and uh, clean the top and the fans and I can rebuild my stove. Although at the moment, now the sun's come out, it's lovely and warm, so I'm in no rush to do the uh, fire. I might light it four or five o'clock tonight. So simple as that. So always remember, keep it nice and clean. It'll look after you. Remember to turn them vents all the way off so you don't get any soot coming out. And if you've got a back boiler and you find it, all the ashes dropping behind it, just get a, an embroidery ring. Separate it, put a piece of plastic between the two loops, tighten it up and just slide it over the top. Makes life a lot easier. You know me, anything for an easy life. I reckon it's time for a coffee. I know I've gone on a, a bit about how good my neighbours are here at Mercia, but look at this. Last night, I takes Misty out when it was dark for her last walk. And when I stepped on board Freedom, sitting on the uh, stern was this. So I've got a fairy cider. Fairy cider? A cider fairy. <laughs> I haven't even had a drink. I've got a cider fairy who's brought me this can of dry cider. Now I can limit it down to possibly two uh, and I honestly don't know who has actually left it but to whoever it was this is going to be this week's cider of the week. Now this is a job for tomorrow. Um, I noticed last night when we was doing a sound horn sound for a gentleman off the marina I came to blast the horn and it wouldn't work and uh, now I've got it to work but it's, I've noticed all this is crubby. You can see it's cracked, not in a good place. So I've been to Chandler today and I bought, I don't know if you can actually see that, a new horn switch. I think it was about £3.50. And you can't, uh, I can't continue with this. There you, you can just see how badly cracked it is. So yeah, tomorrow morning, one of my first jobs, fit this new horn, switch and uh, get rid of this one. Whilst I was in the chandlery, I bought some more of these, well actual technical name is, but the clips. <laughs> and my thinking is, I'm going to drill and fasten here. So there'll be a couple of them fastened on that green bar. So the extender, instead of going in the locker, will then mount on there, out of the way. So when I'm on the water, if I did need this longer bar, I wouldn't have to go into the locker, which is normally padlocked. I can just literally grab this, bring it across and place it there, where that one is. So I think that's going to make a bit more sense. I have bought two large clips. Because I'm wondering whether or not I ought to fit the rudder, the rudder arm there, across the back, and this extender pole will actually fit nicely there, out the way. So, uh, yeah, a couple of uh, little tasks tomorrow, and uh, hopefully I'll make use of them clips because they're only about ninety some pence each, and I think the bigger ones was about about one pound something but i just thought maybe having that rudder arm extender there this complete thing with the little one on the top sitting there out the way uh makes a lot more sense than taking up my storage locker space over there now i have got some smaller clips and i've just got a feeling that i might be able to do something with these um windlasses using the smaller clips but uh, yeah I'll uh, make a decision on that tomorrow as you know when I make a plan it never normally goes to plan I always change it so we'll see how it develops good morning and welcome to Thursday the 3rd of November 
it's a bit of a well, cool day today it's rained in the night but it looks of it a bit fresh and uh, I'm pleased to say common sense kicked in last night I uh, you'll just seen in that little bit of a um, vlog that I've just done reference the yesterday which I did reference the clips that I bought from the Chantry and my intention was to hang the um, the long of the extension rudder extension poles and then put the actual rudder pole itself and the windlass on the back when I've actually woke up and uh, smelt the coffee because if I put the rudder arm on the back of the boat it's a little bit like locking your house and hanging the key in the porch <clears throat> so if someone was going to steal and they do people steal boats as big as this they'll still steal them um, if they're organized um, to try and steer freedom without the length of the rudder arm itself the heavy arm that slots onto the the small swan neck would be very difficult with the arm it's very light and very easy so if i left the arm on the back of the boat then obviously I'm just tempting fate. Um, so I've actually found somewhere inside Freedom where I can actually put that under lock and key. So my thinking is if I was to be moored, I don't know, let's just say for I'm sake in Lincoln or Newark or wherever, and I decided I was gonna have a week there and I left the boat to go off for a day, um, there's, no, there's no way that they're gonna easily steal it. <clears throat> but if that rudder arm's there, it's a temptation so I found as I say a place on the boat where it'll be under lock and key I'm still going to put the extension rod where I said I was going to put it and I'm going to fit um, a couple of brackets just to hang one windlass on the back of freedom and I'll keep the other two in my storage locker again my thinking there is if I hung all three again somebody will think well he's got three I'll pinch one and if somebody did pinch the only one that's hanging, I've got two spares. So uh, what have I done so far today? I've took Misty out, I've had my breakfast. I've just taken the uh, feed wire off the horn in the bow of um, Freedom. And the first thing I'm going to do is have a go at sorting that faulty switch out. Um, and I've had to take the wire off because when I'm messing about with it, it'll just keep sending the horn off. So I'm going to take you off this uh, roof where you are at the moment, set you up in front of the switch panel and let's have a go at changing it. Right. I just need to get at this proper. You see it's just literally sort of fell apart. And again I showed you this last night but you'll see it maybe a little bit better. You see how perished it's gone and uh, a little bit of the mechanism inside. It, it may be okay. But the way I look at it, for what it's cost, just to replace it, if I can do that myself, I'm sure I can. Um, I think it was £3.50. Let's have it right. It's amazing, considering, again, as I say, this boat's never been anywhere. How things just perish and uh, wear out just by not being used. And uh, this is why, when I do eventually go for my... Uh, can't see down there look <laughs> just tick up a bit so i'm talking to you and not the floor uh, when i go out on my first what i call proper voyage which is my plan voyage to go to liverpool i'm going to get freedom well i'll do it myself i think serviced i'll maybe get an engineer just to check everything just to be sure i haven't missed anything um and then i'm anticipating having about three months of what i call playtime which isn't the right word, but getting used to freedom, um, most likely up on the water near Sawley, just going through a few locks, going to Sawley and back, uh, experiencing how she handles, but more importantly, so everything has a chance to run, you know, let the engine do a bit of hard work, um, and if anything's hopefully going to go wrong, it goes wrong when I'm not far from home. So uh, that's my thinking. Right, I'm just going to lift this panel out the way. How's this one holding? This one's just pushed in. Okay, so it's, um, you know, obviously 
Now then, I've got to think about this because if I take both them wires off, the wires are going to drop all the way down there. I don't really want them to drop inside the engine, down into the engine bay. Right, so what we'll do, we'll take the logical approach, and I think this is an identical switch. Yeah, it is. But as you can see now, look how nice that rubber is compared to how worn out that one is and perished. So it's exactly the same. Um, yeah, it is. It's exactly the same switch, which is good. So, what we're going to do? The spring goes in that way. What I'm going to do, I'm going to simply change one wire at a time. It doesn't say, I don't think it matters on these 12 volt systems, there's not a, a right and a wrong way that looks of it. So, it's going to go in that way. Right, so I know what I'm doing. So, first thing is get one of the wires off. Let's go with black first. I can still reach that, it hasn't gone too far down out of the way. It's one good thing, if you're using exactly the same switch then you know everything's gonna everything's gonna fit in. I'm just gonna tighten that up a little bit because it's a bit too fat to go through the hole. Doing this with your bare fingers, it would be quite, uh, quite sharp. Right, that's better. That's better. Right, let's get you tightened up. Nice and firm. It is. You stay up there. Right, now that's it. The red wire. And again, like I say, it's, it's amazing how things wear out when they're not actually doing anything. That's uh, it's the same in houses, I suppose, if you don't use stuff. And it's the same with classic cars. I know if you, I'm, I'm into classic cars, if you put your car away and don't run it and uh, keep an eye on everything. It's amazing how all the rubber boots perish and uh, you suddenly find when you come to use it brake hoses are giving up because they've perished, water hoses have gone and you're thinking well I've never used it so why is it all gone like that? It's just because it's standing still. Right, so that bit goes like that. Conical spring in there little this little gizmo there is in the actual rubber button part and that presses between two little copper um, points inside the switch so make sure we get that in right tighten it not up behind make any play out so it's nice and sealed Right, I'm just going to go and put the wire back on. Ah, I can't see. Okay, wire's back on, so... Sorted. Not a big job, but a job well done. And it's a job that needed doing. And uh, part and parcel, I found, living on a boat, is learning just to have a go. I mean, I know it's only a simple switch to most people, but when you've never done one before, it always makes you wary that you're going to either wire something up wrong, you know, think it through, take your time, and uh, as you 
as you could hear, it's sorted. On to the next task. Now I've prepared these clips off camera. I just thought you'd be bored if you saw me doing what I'm doing. Basically, this is a, a larger version that I'm not now going to be using. This is when I was going to hang the um, the rudder arm itself in on the back of the boat, which as I've already explained, I'm not going to do that now. But it's good because it can now show you the difference. As you'll see on these clips, I've taken off this extra foot because I'm only going to use the upright as the fixing point. Um, and I've done it on four because I want two to use for the ex uh, tiller extension and two that I'm going to use as um, the brackets to hold the windlass. So, but just before I do that, it's funny how you start a job, well it is for me anyway, you start a job and then you, off, you wander off onto something completely different. Because this is just a, something I thought about. Because I've just been in the engine bay to get the screws out. And that will stop that being a problem in the future. Because in my electric cupboard, I'm going to screw that lid under a shelf, put my screws in there and hang them under the shelf. I'll show you that when I've put it up. It's very simple, but it's uh, very logical. It saves me keep going down and having to lift the engine cover every time I want to get to all my screws and my bits and my bobs. Right, I'm just going to get myself set up with the camera so you can see what I'm doing and uh, then I'll come back to you. So, my plan of action is, is to mount this on here. And as you can see, it just fits in there nicely. And I'm going to rest it on these brackets. And I'm just going to measure out the same distance at each end for the brackets and then drill my holes. So, we know that this is about, well, what is it? It's a couple of inches shorter. Let's measure it proper, Martin. Do it proper. And then we can take the distance off each end. Okay, so we're talking 37 inches. And this is 39, so if I come in, in fact, it'd be better hiding behind there, two inches in. So if I come in two inches from that end, it's gonna take it too far. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna come in eight inches, I think. Just need to mark 18 inches here. And I mark 18 inches in from this end. This is just where the brackets are going to go. And now all I need to do oh, look at that. It's bang on. Drill the hole there, that should be perfect. Just mark that. And do the same here. Oh, now what have I done with my top for my pet? Oh, here. Okay, so now what we do is punch. Just so the drill doesn't go skipping all over the place. which I believe this is. Oh, I wish I could see. Yep, yeah, this is five. <laughs> it's five mil. Tight mil. Now this again is one of the drills I've shown you before where it actually drills and then taps the thread for the bolt. Finally, we're through. So, let's just make sure get your five mil thread in there. I've drawn the hole out four and a half mil using a high speed drill bit. Yes. So the good news is we've got an hole. So let's make sure definitely fits okay. 
and the fan comes together. Don't need the nuts, but I'm not going to throw them away because there's always a chance. I save everything. I am actually saving this the switch we took off, the faulty switch. I'm saving it because it's got the spring, it's got the base part to it that still works, got the locking nut. I mean, the only bit in there that's not worth saving is the rubber knob on the end, I think, and maybe the contact plate. Um, but the older I get, the more I get like my dad. He never throw anything away. And used to always think, what's he kept that for? But, again, if you're in the middle of nowhere, on the side of a river, a canal, and you want a 5mm nut, at least I can go in my jar and go, ah, go on then. There. Right, I'll uh, come back when I've got the other one done, because that took a bit of sorting. But at least we know it works and it isn't a solid block of metal. Oh. Right, so eventually I managed to get the hole in there. I can say one thing, without being disrespectful to the Chinese, it's definitely not Chinese steel that this boat's built of. It's definitely not. Some really good quality steel gone into this. I didn't think we were going to get the holes in to start with. Right. Okay. So that should, in theory, be ideal. Look at that. Just look at that. Almost looks like it's been done by somebody who knows what they're doing, as my dad would say. That fits there lovely. It's nice and solid, look, it's not going to slip about. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, and it's it's he easy because if I'm on the tiller, I can grab that without even going to the tiller. So if I need to put this extender on, I'm down here, look. If I need to put this extender on, I can just pull it out and take the pin out and change the small arm for the longer one. Sorry for being a bit uh, <laughs> sided, but yeah. Jobs are good in. So now I'm going to have a go at drilling two more brackets in. Uh, and I've just realised I've, I've actually put the brackets in. It was the wrong brackets because these are the ones we're going to use. Uh, I might go to the chamber and get two more small ones because they actually fit that better than these would have done. Right, I'll uh, come back to when I've got my act together. But it's all about uh, DIY for oh, getting it right. I didn't bother videoing me drilling at all because you've seen me just up the other one and I actually got the brackets off as I'd already applied and I've used the slightly larger ones for the extension pole and I was initially going to put two brackets on here but I don't actually see whether or not it's going to be any point because unless the other one's up there because of the weight of a windlass it's going to always want to tilt slightly down so I'm thinking just resting it in the one bracket easy to get hold of drop it back in you know exactly where it is and it's near the control panel uh, and within easy reach of the rudder so if I have to step off the boat to do a lock it's there ready for me uh, easy to get at no complicated clips and I say these are 90 some pence and they're so handy but uh, I think you'll agree again nice easy job well other than the steel being rock hard um, Sorry for the noise in the background, the electricity board's checking the lines again so they've come over with helicopter, the underprices are going up. Right, what have I got to do now? I've got to show you. I've got a leak. But I'm going to have a coffee first. Just quick to show you. Where are we? Rear look. I know there's a reason why I kept saving marmalade jars. In fact, I think I'm going to put a row of them under that shelf and that shelf to put all my bits and bobs in and uh, all the small items that I would normally store in the engine bay I'm just going to put them in jars because it's just easier isn't it to get at I can't use this shelf here because all that has got to go to make room for the Victron um, MPPT controller for the solar when it comes in and that'll be in the next few weeks so uh, I've got to remove that shelf just to give us 
plenty of space but uh, there's no hardship because I can reorganize things like I say put a row of these in I've got loads of jars the older I'm getting the more I'm getting like my dad I tell you he'd save jars just to put things in um yeah so made, made a good use of a of um of an empty jar and it'll save me having to keep jumping down into engine bay every time I want a screw or a washer or punch or whatever and when I get a lot of them in there I'll get it better organized so I'll have nuts and bolts in one screws in another and I'll get it you know looking dead professional thought I'd just show you so, so what we can do when you have got a leak there's always something you know don't think moving on to a boat is all sailing in the sunshine because it isn't it's just like being in a house except you're sitting on the water so freedom sprung a leak well technically she hasn't sprung a leak but we've got a leak somebody a couple of weeks ago when you was being nosy when i was doing side of the week from my bedroom which i'm going to stop doing because you're just too nosy one of you again there's some sharp eye folk out there you see i do get watched because somebody sent me a message to one of our social media platforms asking what's in the box <laughs> What secrets does this box hold and why is it there sitting on top of this end of the bed cabinet? Well, this bed, end of the bed cabinet, which I'll show you in a minute, is designed to hang shirts, coats, etc. Um, and like on most boats and most houses, it's really become just a dumping ground. I, I've put shirts in there that I've not touched since I've moved onto the boat in, what's that, 19 months. So, what is this box? I'm going to show you. This lifts off. And just put it on the floor out of the way for now. And this is the header tank to my central heating. And when I bought Freedom, I can remember Jeff saying to me, periodically, just check your water level. You've got a, a minimum and a maximum, like you do on a car when you're filling your cooling system up on a car. And basically, it's exactly the same, except I've got more radiators. And uh, I haven't used the heating really a lot. You know, I've turned the thermostat right down so it wouldn't come on. But as it's getting colder, I thought, right, I'll, I'll let the water run through the radiators and get that little bit of background warmth. They never get as hot as they are in a house, but you do get a bit of background warmth. And uh, so I came to have a look and I always have a, a torch just so I can see down the inside and it was bone dry and I thought well that's maybe because I haven't used it for a while so I fetched a jug of water and topped it back up and then I looked down and it was bone dry so I fetched another jug of water and you're right it was bone dry on the third attempt these are only small jugs to be fair but on the third attempt it filled up to the maximum line now I keep saying and again this is a job I'm going to do at some point I'm going to remove this bottle uh, drain the water down, move this bottle off the wall, and I'm going to soak it inside, bung all the holes up, or, or put it in a bowl with some bleach water because it's a bit similar to the edit tank on your car. You know, when you're constantly putting like an antifreeze water solution in there, it gets a bit gungy on the inside. So it's not really easy to read these maximum and minimum. So you, you tend to look inside and work from looking down inside. But if I cleaned it, I think it would be more practical so filled it up and i thought right i'll go to bed got up next morning and there's the maximum line and the water was down here somewhere so it dropped about an inch so i released the air on the um there's a bleed valve on the back of the boiler and quite a bit of air came out which then obviously is replaced by water in the system and i'm thinking well maybe the boiler had got a bit of too much air in there and I topped it back up and went to work. Came home, it had dropped an inch. So then I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got a leak on a joint somewhere. Now the trouble is, it's the same as a house. All the pipes then are literally placed in the house, in the boat and boxed in. Now fortunately, from the back boiler, it goes, the pipes go, is a straight run behind the cooker. There's no joint, so I know that for a fact. But in the passageway, there's the pump, the central heating pump that sends the water around the system. And I'm thinking, well, maybe it's leaking from there. 
Now, I had reason to look at that when I first moved on board. And the boxed-in section is covered in carpet. And then there's uh, like a skirting board, for want of a better word, that holds everything together. I deliberately left that unscrewed. It looks tidy, but it's easy for me then to get access to in an emergency if I needed to get to the pump for any reason. So, took out my trusty torch, had a shine around, felt all round, bone dry. And I am worrying because I'm thinking, well, it's either from the where the header tank is, it's going, the water's going to go across the front of the boat, across the bow area, inside somewhere, around the back of my bed, where the head of the bed is, through the bathroom, where all the pipe work is for the um, water tank, behind the sink, down to the last radiator, which is behind the sofa. And I've, I thought, well, I've got to have a heck of a task. Well, and then I thought, in this cupboard, there's a radiator. It doesn't serve a great deal of use, really. I mean, as I say, it's only background heat. But it does obviously keep uh, any moisture at bay, uh, bay that's in the boat. So they do serve a purpose, but they're not like yours in the house where you put your hand on them and they're really hot. The more so squirrel keeps my boat hot. So I'm just going to lift you down and show you what I discovered. So I'm sorry for moving you around. I keep having to apologise for moving people around. And I can't see now. I'm going to have to flick the picture. Yeah, that's a bit better because I can now see the back of the screen and I can see that I've, I've got what I want to show you. And what I want to show you is just there, look, with that light shining. Flipping pinhole. Radiator that's hardly ever done any work. Pinhole. And uh, so I've turned this valve off here. I'm spilling in front on you in there. And I've turned the valve off at the other end and I've done a bit of research and I've now got to go and buy a 900 by 500 K11 type radiator. And uh, so that's going to be maybe next week's task. So at the moment I've isolated it. This bit of carpet below where I'm shining the torch on now was damp. It wasn't like wet, but it was damp. Um, and I put a bowl under there for a few days after I turned the valves off. Uh, just to check there was nothing dripping, and there isn't. So, yeah, I've got a leak. Fortunately, in a way, the good thing is I know exactly where it is. So, uh, having never fitted or removed a radiator in my life in a um, central heating system, luckily a couple of boats down from me, there's John and Deb, and John's a plumber. So, um, I'm going to have a go. And hopefully I won't need to call on him to help me out. But uh, yeah, another job for another day. At the moment, I can manage without it. Uh, it's isolated. It's not going to cause me a problem. But uh, always watch what you're doing because there's always something on a boat that needs work. Well, well it's uh, an end of another vlog. And uh, considering I wasn't actually going to be doing much, we've still got one or two jobs sorted. Um change of mind as you've seen earlier on the tiller arm um, pole but obviously that was a stupid idea to start with <laughs> leaving it on the back of the boat wasn't have been a clever idea even if I'd have put it in my locked um, storage locker there's always a chance that somebody would have broken the lock off of that so I'm going to store it in the boat so it'll be under the cameras that I have inside the boat it will also they'd have to come through the doors of the boat uh, past the alarm system and into a locked cupboard so uh, I don't think that's going to happen the uh, the leaky radiators I said is something I've got to sort out um, I was tempted just to leave it sealed off and let it be as it is but uh, no I can't do that it needs to be sorted and uh, I've now got a horn that works um, I did have a go at it trying to sort the old switch out yesterday which I meant to mention which I meant to mention and uh, I got myself in the right tiz because I actually got it to work but then it it decided to come on on its own and it wouldn't turn off so I had to come pull the wire off so it's all a learning curve but at least now for £3.50 it's got a new switch on it what else have I got to tell you well uh, not a lot except I don't know if anybody knows this but 
Mercy Marine has become quite famous um, for fairies. A lot of people don't obviously believe in fairies. I definitely believe in fairies. Not all fairies, just the side of fairies. Because uh, not long ago, I came back from Walking Misty and the side of fairy had left me a can. Um, I can't remember now. I'm sorry, I can't remember. It's either Woodpecker or Bulmers on the back of the boat, which I reviewed. And uh, I took Misty out a couple of nights ago. And when I came back, sitting on the back of my boat was a can of this. Thatcher's Goblin Cider. Now, I've got a feeling I know which fairy's left this. Because this Green Goblin, as it's called, Somerset, is a dry cider. And I can just recall earlier in the week a gentleman asking me if I'd tried the Aldi Toffee Apple, uh, which I sort of had and I'd reviewed it and I didn't like it. Well, I didn't particularly like it. And I says, uh, there's still so many I haven't tried. I says, I've got to try some dry ciders. And what a surprise, we've got a Somerset dry cider. It's uh, 5%, 440 mil. Ain't got a clue where it's come from, as in which shop. Can't give you a price, but that's really not the most important thing. I just think it's lovely that I've got neighbours, subscribers, followers who not only leave us lovely comments but leave me cans of cider. I'm sorry you're getting shadows but I'm doing this it's about six o'clock now on uh, what day are we on Wednesday yeah Wednesday and I need to put, upload all the photos tonight and the videos ready for editing tomorrow uh, and I want to do this before I take Misty out for her last walk so uh, as I say every week, I normally say crack it open. Well, it is a can, I suppose. He can still crack it open. Let's see how dry, how dry this dry cider is. And to Callum and Louise, as you can see every week, I still use this lovely tankard. Very, very precious to me, this. Again, even though my neighbours have moved 11 miles away, I think it's about 11 miles, they're still my neighbours. And uh, for the next three weeks, I've got three bottles of cider that Callum kindly left me the other day. Um, and I don't think I've tried any of them before. So uh, I'm doing well. <laughs> so if anybody who's watching this has got a cider and you want to send it me, Mercy Marina, Martin, Care of Freedom. Now, what have we got here? Well, it's, it smells like a traditional cider because it's not fruit flavoured, other than apples. But as you can see, it's got quite a froth on it and uh, packed with bubbles. Oof. Lovely. <laughs> I've got to say that because I think the fairy only lives about <laughs> three boats away from me. No, honestly, it's actually quite... If you like dry... I always think it's weird, isn't it, when they say it's dry. I mean, obviously it's wet, but you know what I mean, dry. And as I said last week, I don't do dry wines, still wines, um, and champagnes, and even though they've got the bubbles, if they're dry, it makes me shudder. It's not... How do I describe it? It's not hitting you in a way the way you think oh god i couldn't drink this if you like a dry drink then this is the one of all the sizes that we've had so far this one would definitely tick the boxes for you to me it's got a it's got a bit of a aftertaste a bit of a twang and i don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but it's definitely got a bit of a twang to it. I can hear Misty now trying to get through the door because she thinks she's missing out. I'm not opening that door because she'll be knocking camera over. Uh, yes, yeah, so back to the cider. Very apply, uh, quite refreshing. The taste is there, you know, as in all the way through the drink. Yeah, but it's definitely got a bit of a twang. It's like a, it's almost like a metallic taste. Um, where would I rank this? 
I'm not going to rank it up eight and nine because I'd be lying to you. I think this is a seven. I could drink it. I won't go out and buy it, I'll be honest. But if somebody bought me this in a pub and said, yeah, I bought you a cider, mate, do you want it? Uh, I'd drink it and I'd still smile. I don't think it's a bad drink. It'd be nice again with a, a roast dinner because it's that kind of cider. It's light in the, when you taste it, it's not going to say, doesn't knock your head off. It's just that bit of a metallic -y. To me, it's got a metallic -y aftertaste. could just be the dryness that gives it that I don't know but I've got a whole can full to, drink, <laughs> to get through so I'm going to put the rest of it back in the fridge and when I get back from taking Misty I'll have my shower my stove will be 28 degrees out into the boat and I'll be drinking this because I won't waste it so what remains for me to say is thank you for the lovely comments I got last week thank you for the cider from the cider fairy and if oh pardon me if you're watching this which you obviously must be because otherwise you wouldn't be listening please 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 do subscribe the reason i want you to subscribe is we've been going a year now and uh, i wanted um last christmas to have 100 subscribers and i think i can't remember offhand now but i think we had about 120 130 and we're never going to be, and I know we're never going to be, one of these supersonic YouTube channels that's got, you know, 100,000 subscribers, because that's not what we're about. Um, we're not all whistles and flutes and bells and trinkets. It's just as it is. It's just me, Misty and Freedom. So, in a moment, we're on 382. So I'd love to get to 400 for Christmas. And we've only got whatever it is now, six, seven weeks, so when you finish watching just press the subscribe button it doesn't cost you anything and press the notification bell give me a thumbs up because that does my mental well-being a hell of a, a boost and uh, i will catch up with you next week my daughter didn't come as was planned this week but she's now coming next week and i've invited her to do cider of the week with me so you'll get to meet the girl behind all the wording and all the um thumbnail pictures that's in the start of every youtube vlog and uh, i might be spending quite a bit of time on uh tuesday wednesday with my daughter so the vlog next week depending on what happens will be completely different but it, i will put something out and we will definitely do a cider of the week and I've got plenty for it to try so uh, until next week again thank you for watching thank you if you give me a thumbs up please don't give us a thumbs down press the subscribe button look after yourselves and i'll talk to you next week